Hey, thanks for joining us for day two at Sierra Space 2016, the largest maritime exposition in the US. Today we're focusing on air, surface and subsurface platforms. What you see here is the V-22 Osprey. This is an aircraft that is built by Boeing and Bell Helicopter. The airplane has been built for the Marine Corps and for the Air Force and most recently for the Navy. Uh, they selected V-22 to do their carrier on board delivery logistics resupply mission last year. Uh, we're now doing the development of some minor changes to make it suited for that specific mission. We also think it would be suitable to other international navies around the world who have a similar kind of need. So the preliminary and contract design for Fly 3 are complete. The detail design is ongoing at both shipyards, both Bath Ironworks and Ingalls. That started last year in 2015 and is scheduled to go through the late summer, early fall of 2017 before it completes. And then you'll be ready to start ship construction. Uh, the detail design at both yards is currently on schedule. The biggest new capability for Fly 3 is the Spy 6 radar. It replaces the Spy 1 DV. That radar is the, the bumper sticker we talk about it is it's 15 dB more powerful, 15 decibels more powerful. Uh, what that translates into is over 30 times the power and sensitivity. If you like, it can see a target half as big, twice as far away than, a, uh, than the, the current radar. What that gives you in combat capability is the ability, especially in the uh, ballistic missile defense arena, it's the ability to engage more targets simultaneously that are more sophisticated and the ability to resist uh, spoofing, jamming, the fooling of the radar to track and shoot at the wrong thing. Uh, this, because of the sensitivity and because of the flexibility of the new radar, it defeats those ch radar challenges, so. The air missile defense radar program right now is over 75% complete. We're well into 30 months into the program. We have uh, met all of our major milestones on plan, including hardware CDR and software CDR. Uh, most recently, the uh, test readiness review for the uh, hardware qualification. And that would be the hardware qualification of the first AMDR SPY-6 radar that was built in less than 24 months. It is currently up in our near field range and will be moving to Pacific Missile Range facility in the next couple months. So good morning, Steve. Uh, what can you tell us about this new model? Good morning, Xavier. We're very proud to roll out this model of LPD-28, and I'll point out to you some of the design features that we have worked with the Navy on to reduce the cost of the San Antonio-class LPD. First, you'll notice that the bulwarks are a little simplified from the bulwarks on the LPD-17. Next, we moved away from the composite mast as the Navy was willing to use a traditional mast, so that's a steel mast based on the DDG-51 mast design. In the middle, we removed some of the structure in the boat valley. It's more open without a loss of capability in the, in the boat valley. And then on the aft mast, the SPS-48 radar sits on a pedestal similarly to the way that it does on the LHA-6 and 7 that Ingalls builds today. And then finally, if you look at the back of the ship, you'll notice that the stern gate is open at the top, much like the LSDs in the fleet today. Behind me we have our Proteus vehicle. It is a, uh, a dual mode undersea vehicle. It has the ability to operate with people on board. 
uh, combat swimmers. It also has the ability to operate without anyone on board and to be fully autonomous and to run missions on its own. We have added on board, you'll see alongside the vehicle, the uh, rails and cargo pods that demonstrate its ability to carry external payload, external cargo. It also uh, has been equipped with a uh, 360 degree camera at the top of the mast, which is up here uh, right at the moment. Battelle's uh, role in the Proteus project was to bring in the autonomy and the battery system. It's a 148 kilowatt hour battery system. It's a lithium ion battery system that uh, was developed with over a decade's worth of uh, technology. The autonomy that was brought in is uh, based on a UUV platform. This model is the Ohio Replacement Submarine. It's the next generation sea-based deterrent platform for the United States. It's going to replace the Trident submarine of ballistic missile submarines. And it's to make an enduring nuclear deterrent capability for the U.S. and in particular the sea-based deterrent leg of the nuclear triad. This, the Ohio Replacement will be a 12 submarine force. We're going to be designing that submarine uh, today through uh, the next several years and working very closely with the U.S. Navy and our industry partners to complete the design process and then commence construction on a very critical timeline to deliver the submarine in time for patrols so that we can seamlessly continue the U.S. nuclear capability. multi-mission configuration so the big difference as, as discussed was from the littoral combat ship which was a single focus mission ship the frigate is targeted to be a multi-mission ship with capability in AAW self-defense, a surface and ASW, anti-submarine warfare. This representation shows some of the systems that could be on the ship including an enhanced DW system, soft kill weapons capability as well as an over the horizon missile. Uh, the representation here shows what a harpoon missile would look like installed. The LCS program is uh, evaluating different missile solutions that they could use. Uh, the hull form and the propulsion train remains the same uh, in this configuration, accommodating the MH60 uh, helos as well as UAV capability, CRAM, and then some of the components of the surface warfare module that used to be on the, the modular LCS in 30 millimeter guns and a surface to surface missile compartment. The model uh, next to me is, the, uh, is our uh, frigate offering, um, conceptually uh, based on what we know from the Small Surface Combatant Task Force, which we were tasked about a year and a half ago to come with possible solutions for the frigate. Here we've shown the Harpoon missile, which is going to be mounted on our LCS-4 uh, for a June deployment, for this June's deployment to RIMPAC and then further on operations uh, in, the, in the Pacific. So we're very excited to be able to take the LCS platform and start adding lethality to it as people have talked about and really put it out there so people now can see it. It's not just, it's not a model, it's not a myth, it's, uh, it's actually something that can be done. So for us, we've got the space and weight, um, the, no matter what system the Navy would pick, uh, we've engineered both uh, possible solutions into our, into, our, uh, into our hull form. We've got the ability to take almost everything uh, in, the, in the Navy uh, inventory. And again, we've researched it for a year and a half and we're working with the Navy so when the definitive solutions come out, we'll be ready to do that. I'm part of Fincantieri Marine Group, which is the U.S. subsidiary to Fincantieri here in the U.S. with three shipyards up in 
the Great Lakes. Uh, we're currently building the littoral combat ship for the Navy up in Marinette uh, Marine, and our, the Army has a, a major program this summer to replace the, the LCM-8. Uh, we're, we're teaming with our French partner, Kanim, based on their all-cat design to, to build the maneuver support vessel light for the U.S. Army. This model is the French header, the uh, LCAT. Uh, this is uh, the original design that we are using for uh, MSVL in partnership with the uh, FinCan Chairmaring Group. And I'm very happy to cooperate with them. And our cooperation is the perfect example of joining uh, the French uh, Church of Class and the American uh, industrial strength.